What is happening, guys? It's Friday, and you know what that means? It means it's time for another episode of the Road Racing 360 Show, presented by 1833 CJ Nose. This week, we finally got some on-track news coming to you. There's a Moto2 and Moto3 test that has already kicked off in Portimao. We've got MotoGP testing coming up, which means we also saw the new Patronus bikes for this season. And we're going to talk about a little bit more of what's happening in road racing. As always, got to thank our sponsor, 1833 CJ Knows Accident and Injury Law. If you have been involved in an accident or wrongfully injured, give 1833 CJ Knows a call. The number is in the name right there. They're accident and injury lawyers that ride, they race, and they know the law. They will take care of you in your time of need. We're going to go ahead and kick off this week with another livery reveal. And that is for the Petrona Sepang Racing Team. As you see right here, that is the new Yamaha M1 that Franco Morbidelli and the GOAT Valentino Rossi are going to be racing this season in MotoGP. Now this is a big year for this team. They are coming off what they have six wins last year. So for an independent team, this is a... Uh, this is going to be big because they've got a rider that won three races, finished second in the championship, and they also have the addition of one of the greatest MotoGP racers of all time in Valentino Rossi. So the big question remains how Valentino is going to do. As we've seen, he was somewhat inconsistent last year, put up some solid results, even got a podium, but he is getting older. He is not the same Valentino that has won nine championships already. So will this move to the Petronas team maybe give him a spark, or reignite Valentino into uh, the Valentino of old. I don't know, but we'll see. I think this is a good spot for him to go to because it doesn't have the pressure of being a factory rider, and not that I think he'd be bothered by that anyway, but the Sepang Racing Team has been able to do it kind of their own way in, in some ways, and it has provided some pretty good results. On the other hand, you've got Franco Morbidelli, who is actually one of Valentino's protégés. He has been a part of the VR46 Academy for a long time now. As we saw last year, even with the mechanical problems that sort of set him back in the early part of the season, he did fight back and beat Fabio Cordero in the championship, finishing second to champion Joanne Mir. In relation to the news with the Patronus team announcing their new bike, we did see what Franco Morbidelli and Valentino Rossi had to say about the new team. In an interview, Franco stated that Val will be on the other side of the garage and I hope and believe that this will be a good year, both for me and for him. We have a strong relationship that has lasted many years and will learn a lot from each other. There are a lot of uncertainties related to this season. The only certain thing is that sooner or later, I'll get on my M1, I hope as soon as possible, and even just the idea of that makes me happy. My goal for 2021 is to improve both as a person and as a rider. I know it will be difficult because I was fast enough last year and I had some great races. Either way, I'll have to do it. Franco also acknowledged the fact that he is one of the championship favorites and that he has to kind of step it up from what he did last year. He had great results, was the best Yamaha rider, but can he continue that? That is to be seen this year on the track. Now on the other side of the garage, Valentino Rossi did talk about his future in MotoGP and what is going to come and make the decision whether he will continue on for another year or if he will hang up the leathers at the end of the season. Valentino did say that the decision on his MotoGP future would come by the middle of the year and it really just depended on if he was competitive and comfortable on the machine. He said, my decision is going to come from the results. If I'm strong and if I can fight for the podium, if I can fight for the victory, I can continue on also another year. Or if not, no, I won't continue. So I'll decide around the summer. So it'll be interesting to see what the future holds for Valentino Rossi. It is known that he is starting to get involved in potentially having his own team in MotoGP. Now, he does have a Moto2 team currently and did have a Moto3 team. That Moto3 team did get sold off to the Adventure Squad, so they are now running all the old equipment that the VR46 team had. So what that means is if he hangs it up, will he look into bringing an entire team to MotoGP next year? Maybe. We've already seen that he has VR46 branding 
all over the Avinci bike that Luca Marini is riding. So that remains to be seen what the future holds for Valentino past his racing career. In Moto2 news, this week we did see the American Racing Team release the new bike that they are going to be running for 2021. Ahead of the test at Portimao, we did see five-time Moto America Superbike champion Cameron Bobier hop on his new American Racing Team Moto2 bike for the first time. In his red, white, and blue leathers that match the bike, it was a thing of beauty. He looked, it's like, it's like seeing Captain America for the first time. You know, as an American, I can't help but be rooting so hard for this guy. He has earned it completely. You know, he's dominated Superbike here in the States, and it is great to see him move on to Moto2. It'll be interesting to see how Cameron Bobier adapts to a totally new style of bike after riding and sort of mastering the production bikes for so long. And that brings us to the first official Moto2 test of the season. So after two days of testing, you can see the unofficial results right somewhere here on the screen. It's popped up for you right there. You'll notice the top three was Remy Gardner, Marco Bezzecchi, and Joe Roberts. Now remember back to last year when they had a race here at Portimao, Remy Gardner was the pole setter, and while he didn't quite get close to the time that he set for pole, uh, conditions are different, so it's not really a direct comparison. It also wasn't a race weekend, and I'm sure these guys are testing a lot of things and just trying to get acclimated back on the bike. It was interesting to see what some of these new Moto2 riders that have graduated up from the Moto3 series could do. Uh, they seem to be pretty promising, and then also, Everybody here, I speak for myself and everybody, we we're looking to see how would Cam Bobier do in his first outing on the bike in 2021. Now, he did get to ride it last year at a test, but this is the first time this year that he had been able to hop on a bike. And we saw overall in the standings, he ended up 11th. Now, he was just over a second off Remy Gardner's best time. And he did set his best time towards the end of the day in the second day. He had a little tip over. Earlier on day two, was able to get back on the bike and set his fast time. Now these guys will have a couple more opportunities to hop on the bike and test before the first round at Qatar. One of those tests being next week at Jerez, and then after that, the official test at Qatar before the season gets kicked off at the end of March. In an interesting interview this week, the CEO of MV Agusta was talking about the possibility that they could enter MotoGP towards the end of the decade. So now they currently do field a Moto2 team and they've been slowly developing that bike. Their goal this year is to try to finish inside the top 10 with both riders. But before they make the jump to MotoGP, their goal is to first take this Moto2 project and consistently finish in the top 10 and then closer towards the front before they make the big jump. So like I said, it'd be pretty cool to see another brand, a historic Italian manufacturer join MotoGP and make it seven manufacturers on the grid. But that won't be anytime soon. So we'll just keep rooting for them in Moto2 and see if they can get towards the front because the quicker they do that, maybe the quicker they join MotoGP. In some news related to the World Superbike paddock, Maria Herrera announced that she is going to be joining the World Supersport Series this year on a Yamaha R6. She'll be contesting the series on a Biblion Moto X Racing Yamaha. If you remember back, Maria Herrera does have a pass in the GP series. She had previously raced Moto3 as well as Moto E in the previous couple seasons. Since then, she has made some rides in World Super Sport as well as the Super Sport 300 series, but this is the first time that she will be stepping up for an entire season in the World Super Sport category. Great to see another rider stepping up to World Supersport, as well as a female rider who shows she has the talent to compete with the guys. So I'll be rooting for Maria to see what she does in 2021. Moving on to Moto America news for this week, we do have a couple teams that have announced riders for the season. First of that being that Altus Motorsports has announced the two riders that will be contesting the Supersport series on board Suzuki GSXR 600s. Both Kevin Olmedo and Jarrett Nassani are back with Altus for this season. Now they have previously ridden with the team the last couple years and they have proven that they have consistently progressed each time. Last season being Olmedo's first shot in the Supersport class, so I'm finished on the podium in his first race. 
On top of that, Nasani had the best season of his career. Last season, finishing 11th overall in the Supersport Championship standings. So these guys will join Jake Lewis, who's riding their bike in Stock 1000 and Superbike Cup, as well as Hayden Bikinese, who is riding their Ninja 400 in the Junior Cup class. Our final announcement for our Moto American news. Robum Engineering announced that they are going to be contesting the Twins Cup series on the new Aprilia R660. Now last week it was announced that the new R660 from Aprilia had been homologated and approved for use in the Twins Cup class. Returning to the team after a top five finish in a series standings is Toby Kamsuk. He's going to be joined by young veterans Caleb DeCarroll and me. Yeah, that's right. I'm racing. What'd you think? You think I just talk about the show and don't ride, don't race? No. Of course I do. So it looks like a pretty promising team. And I, I don't say that because I'm bragging. I mean, we I did pretty good last year, all right? I had like eight podiums. Caleb, Caleb had nine podiums and won three races. He finished second in the standings. I finished third. Toby finished fifth and has been like right there. So, I mean, it's going to be a pretty good season. Going to be really interesting to see how the new Aprilia R660 does in race trim. So on board with the team at select rounds is going to be our team manager, Carl Price. He has raced the last few seasons in the Twins Cup Series and raced last year with Robum. So it'll be cool to see Dr. Carl back on track. And that wraps it up for this week's episode of the Road Racing 360 show. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Stick around for more content coming. Now, if you're watching this and not a big fan of MotoGP or not even really sure what's going on, don't worry. I've got content coming that is going to have you covered. So if you're just a casual fan or just a new fan, we're going to be breaking down MotoGP and everything about it so you can have a good understanding and become a fan of one of the best sports in the world. Thanks again for watching, guys. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. It really helps us out and keeps us going. We'll see you next week.